Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are going to continue the discussion on how to control values. We are going to do portraits today. We're coming live from our new Discord community here. Thank you for joining me today. If you're watching live here on Discord or if you're watching on replay, comment in the chat room or in the comments below. Where are you located? What time is it for you? I'm currently in Thailand myself, and it's a Friday. So thank you for joining us wherever you are. So let's get started on the topic of value control and portraits here. So again, this is going to be a huge topic, but today I'm just going to uh, touch on some ideas that may be helpful for you and that you can apply in your work. So we're going to talk about forms. Lighting, local color, we'll do some demonstrations and I think it'll be helpful to show you the uh, processes. So forms, can you guess where we're going <laughs> with forms? If you said eggs and boxes, you would be very close. But there's one more form, which is also our friend. The cylinder. So really, when I uh, look, look at a face, and really no matter what lighting, no matter what, what color they are, how dark their skin is, how light their skin is, I immediately see the person as one of these three things or all of these things. We know the egg is a good base model for a head because the head is kind of curved, the skull is kind of round, right? The head is essentially an egg. And we know that those of you who've been drawing for a little while, you know about planes. And you know that the head can also be thought of as a box with planes. But the cylinder is also a very useful friend because the head curves like an egg. The egg curves top to bottom. Your head is curved from top to bottom, right? Your nose in the middle bulges out more than your forehead and your and your chin. Your head also curves left to right. Your nose again bulges out more than your ears. So the cylinder also is our friend, is a good base model. And we know the box is important because the box helps us to see and recognize the planes. Now, the egg is overall useful for many reasons. It's a good general base model to draw. We all, you know, when we draw faces, we all know to start like this, right? Draw a ellipse, which is a two-dimensional egg. But when we light, we know that we must light, we must have a light side and a shadow side, and uh, the human head is very close to the way that you light an egg. And remember, last time we talked about the principle of fall off. In head drawing and portrait drawing, fall off is also known as the egg effect. Comment below if you have heard this term, egg effect, if you... If you uh, study with me or any type of realist, you know, egg effect is always in play. So we know when we draw an egg, we want to, or a head, we want to communicate light. We know that things, generally heads are lit from above. Nine out of ten times, they're lit from above or above and to the right, either to the right or to the left, right? So we know that everything below, generally below your skull, right, your forehead, anything below that must be darker than that. And as it gets further away, it gets darker, 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 darker. Fall off, also known as the egg effect. Now, the cube, we know, we know the cube. 
we know the cube is there. We know that the, the planar model tells us that the head has a front and a side, well, and top and bottom, right? Your hair would go here, your skull would be curved here, and then we turn it, right? So we know that the head is a box because it has a face and two sides. And we know, if we know a little bit of anatomy, we know that this corner, right, over here is the corner of your skull. This is your eye socket, right? This is your cheekbone, your cheek fat, your cheek muscle, and it leads to the chin. We, 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 we all know that. But also we know that in light, oftentimes that will be, and we'll look at some examples of this. If the light is towards us, we know that we know that there's typically highlights here. They're a little bit more subtle. There's highlights here in the corner. They're a little bit more subtle, but um, if you understand that the head is a box, so if you start to look and think of the head as a box, you'll know that that corner is very important. Because that corner will communicate, well, these highlights will communicate the corner. In order for us to make realistic form, especially in when the face is in the three-quarter view, which a lot of faces that we draw will have some, a little bit of three-quarter, you'll see the front and the side. We must, 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 must communicate this corner. So that's why the box model is useful. And value-wise, we know that either... One side will be darker, the light, the shadow side will be, must be darker, must be darker. The side, the shadow side of the box must be darker than the light face of the box. In other words, it's box modeling. Another way to think about it, and what we talked about last week, is different value equals different plane. So. Remember this because we're going to come back to this over and over and over and over again. This was true in the figure. It's true in anything. Anytime you shine a light on a form, the side that faces the light must be brighter than the side that is not facing the light or in shadow. Must be at all times. And this is important because we know, okay, we can clearly see, and we'll look at some examples, we can clearly see when we light a person in three-quarter light, also known as portrait light, Rembrandt light, and we'll look at some examples. You can see that this, um, you know the side of the face will be darker. But what's also going to be darker is the smaller forms. And this is why the box is our friend and planes is such an important part of what we do is because there are smaller forms and each smaller form also has light facing planes and shadow planes planes that are facing away from the light, blocked from the light. For example, the eye socket is a underplane. The side plane of the nose is a side plane, must be darker than the light facing plane. The underplane of the nose, 99% of portrait lighting, the light will be somewhat above or in the front or both. The underplane of the nose must be darker than the top facing plane. The underplane of the nose must be darker than the forehead. The underplane of the eye, the socket, must be darker than the forehead in light. Must be darker. Write that down because this is the common thing that I see throughout my years teaching, over 10 years now. <laughs> and making my own mistakes is that any artists who don't who want to want to start learning lighting they make the mistake of making the eyes light little light shapes in the eyes brighter than they should be comment below if you're guilty of that uh, and th that would include me you know the white of the eye who makes the white of the eye as bright as the forehead? Comment below if you've done that. The highlight in the eye. Comment below if you've made the highlight in the eye the same brightness as the forehead in light. If you've made 
the little shelf of the lower eyelid. If you've made that brighter than the forehead, comment below if you're guilty of that. I am too. Because the head is a box and a box has planes, the head also has light facing and shadow planes. The most important and critical one, besides the side plane, is the socket. The socket is an underplane. Write that down and, and keep that next to you whenever you get stuck. The socket is an underplane. The socket is in shadow. The eyes are in shadow. The eyes cannot be as bright as anything in light. So I'm just going to uh, repeat that because, you know, you're watching this, this title, this video is Controlling Values in Portraits. That is like 80% of the mistake I see in students' work is they make eyes, little shapes and lights in the eyes just as bright as everything else in light. So that right away, you're, you're, you're going to fix a major problem. But we'll, we'll look at some examples of how, how to handle that. And then we have our good friend, the cylinder. The cylinder is useful because, like I said, the head does wrap like a cylinder. It wraps from left to right. It curves. Right, your nose sticks further out than your ears, right? It comes forward. This is useful for two things. Number one, the cylinder is useful, obviously, for side lighting, which is where we see, you see this a lot in, in like movie poster work or in fashion photography and things or artistic photography. Half, half you know, the, the core shadow will be right down the middle. It's called side lighting. So the um, half the face will be in light. So that's an easy strategy for us when we put our gradations right, when we begin to render. And we'll go through some examples how we can make this work is by thinking of the head as a cylinder. But the head as a cylinder also is helpful when we have more softer ambient lights. Ambient means lights all over the place. There's no hard contrast, no, no visible core shadow. So we know generally if the light is somewhere in, in the vicinity a little bit either to the left or to the right, we know that right, we can start with a gradation in a cylindrical form. We can think of the head as a cylind cylinder and start to create the illusion of realistic light and shadow because of this principle here, fall off. Remember, fall off or egg effect in portraits is that as things get further away from light, they get darker. Well, guess what? This side of the cylinder is turning away from the light. It's going, it's further away from the light. So it must be darker. So uh, you'll see when we get to difficult situations like ambient light, soft light, light that's in the, like, like you're standing outside in the shade or on a cloudy day. Or if you're drawing someone who's been lit poorly, like in an office environment, you know, with multiple light sources, you'll be able to use the egg form to start your process, the cylinder form to help you control your value and start your start start shading and, and making the values look good. And then anytime you have planes, you'll know, okay, I must adhere to the box model rule of different value, different plane. Okay, let's talk about lighting. It's related to the box or the forms. One of the things that helps me is when I look at a portrait, you know, I scan it and go, okay, is it more eggy? Is it boxy? Can I use cylinder model? The other thing that I look for is where is the light source? Where is the light? And generally, you know, when I teach, I generally refer to academic lighting, right? So we'll just for now, let's work with Single source, academic lighting, form lighting. The most classical example or traditional example of lighting generally comes in three forms. Portrait light, butterfly light, or frontal light. Portrait light, butterfly light, or frontal light, also known as three-quarter, overhead, and frontal. Three-quarter light, 
we all recognize three-quarter light. It's also known as portrait light, also known as Rembrandt light, because it is generally a very beautiful and flattering and artistic and interesting combination of light and shadow. Portrait light or Rembrandt light means the light source is above and to the right or to the left. In this case, obviously, the light source is above and to the right. As we know, it produces the beautiful three-quarter lighting pattern. And it's often characterized by this triangle of light under the... Um, under the eye and shadow. So it's a really nice flattering shape, that little triangle. Sometimes you'll see this but doesn't make the full triangle. So that's also Rembrandt light, three-quarter light. So this is very common, very fun to draw. I like this light. We all, we all enjoy this light. Very easy to recognize. Next is a butterfly light, also known as overhead. So this is the light is above, directly above. Directly above. And this produces a pretty symmetrical light and shadow pattern. And I guess that's why it's called butterfly because your so eye sockets start to look like butterflies. A little light shape under your nose kind of looks like a little butterfly, right? So real clean, symmetrical light. I really like this light. Uh, one of my favorite painters, Sean Cheatham. Comment below if you're familiar with this work. He uses this a lot. It's really dramatic and... Uh, a lot of the royal portraits back in the day were lit with butterfly type lighting. Uh, next is uh, frontal light. Frontal light, guess where the light source is? It's directly in front of you. And how can you recognize frontal light? Generally, the highlights, the highlights, there, there will be no clear shadow pattern at all. Even the sockets, right? The sockets appear bright. The highlights will be all in the front of the form. Remember, if the head is a box, if the head is an egg, if the head is a cylinder, right? These are all light-facing planes or light-facing parts of the forms. And you can see a little bit of shadow pattern on the outside, always on the outside. And it's typically very symmetrical. And this is very flattering. This is very flattering. So a lot of times, and it's very flattering for older folks, People like me, when you shoot a when you shoot a, a older person and you want to minimize their wrinkles and make them more flattering, a frontal light is great, especially if it's soft and diffused. This is a uh, this is a spotlight. It's it's a single source spotlight put directly in front, so it does still produce some shadows, but it's still very flattering. Notice notice his face, you know, very smooth, and and that that's typically what you want when you when you photograph people. You want to flatter them and make them. Give them less wrinkles, obviously. So frontal light, very, very common. And this one is an example of side light, just like we just talked about with the cylinder. And this one is not as common, but you know, it's, you, you'll see it a lot. O often, uh, I like to paint half lighting because it gives you so much shadow, right? In this case, clearly the light source is directly to the side. Generally, the core shadow is right down the middle, and you'll get what's called 50-50 lighting, 50% 50, 50, 50 light, 50% shadow. So these are interesting. You know, they, they're kind of fun. For color, they're fun because you can play around with color. But in black and white and drawing, it can get tricky because then you have to finesse or correctly handle the shadow, which takes a lot of skill to do it correctly. So we'll, you know, we'll talk about that in future videos. These are important to recognize because they all have a slightly different strategy. And this is why I wanted to talk about this briefly, is that when we have three-quarter light, the butterfly light, overhead light, we can clearly see clear shadow pattern and clear plane distinction, specifically, right, the side plane of the face, side plane of the face and, and the head. And we can clearly see the underplane of the socket. So this gives us a clear 
box definition, which is very uh, useful. It's very clear, you know, that the more clear the lighting is, the the, the easier it is in a, us for us in a way to translate that into our drawing. Right, you can see a clear underplane here, clear side plane here, clear underplane of the jaw. So basically, when I look at this, I go, okay, I know I can use box modeling and I can use box logic. The planes, right, underplanes will be darker than wh whatever's in light. Here, it's a slightly different approach. Here, right, clearly we can't use much of a box. Can you guys see that? Although there is boxiness, right, there is light planes and underplanes, we know that clearly the box will not serve us. But guess what form will? The cylinder. The cylinder will serve us quite well in this case because the, the highlights in the middle, shading on the side, so it's basically a lit cylinder, a light where we're facing the light, and also the egg, generally even in frontal light. The light is never like directly smack in the middle or below the nose, it's generally above your eye level, right? Even though this is frontal light, the light is still roughly above eye level. So also, the egg effect also applies, right? So I know I'm going to be using egg and cylinder, not so much box. And this one, I'm going to use 100% cylinder and some egg, right? Generally, the, the, egg, the egg effect, but I will gradate out from here. You see that? I'll put the brightest highlights here because generally the side light is right around eye level or cheek level when you light a model, right? Notice that the forehead, darker than the cheek, the chin, darker than the cheek. So the egg effect is still there, but the highlight of the egg, the top of the egg, will not be at the top. It'll be, in this case, on the cheek, on the side. So start to become familiar Start to recognize and look for the direction of the light that's really going to help you in planning your strategy and your process. All right, let's talk about local color. Really, local color um, in portraits is either going to be the skin, clothing, or hat, and the hair. Hair can be hair on your head, your eyebrow hair, and facial hair for men, right? We know local color is important, but the thing to remember about local color and why it's a part of your strategy, why it's something to look for and to consider before, you know, when you start to come up with a game plan, is that local color breaks the rules that we just mentioned, right? The, the box rule, the egg rule, the, um, the cylinder rule, the egg effect, right? Fall off states that things further away from the light must be darker than things closer to the light, right? Or things get darker as they get further away. Well, yes, that is true, but we can see that dark hair close to the light or even in light is still pretty damn dark, right? And bright hair, light-colored hair or light-colored local object that's further away from the light, in this case here, is still pretty damn bright. It's not as bright as the light in here, obviously. So, in other words, the local color must be considered as a separate entity, as its own unique entity. Entity. If it's a dark, dark thing like dark beard, dark hair, dark eyebrows, or dark, dark, dark pupils, everybody's pupils are dark, even light blue eyed people. You have to consider it as its own dark creature. If it's dark, group it with darks. And that's really <laughs> what I'm trying to say. If it's light, group it with the light because, um, and this is important, write this down. Light colored objects, light colored objects should be grouped with the light, and that includes skin and hair. Dark colored objects should be grouped with 
the darks, and is typically the shadow. And uh, this is also important. A light colored object in shadow, a light colored object in shadow, the shadow plane of a light colored object is still shadow, is still dark, right? Is still shadow, sort of like her skin. In a way, her skin is lighter than her hair. So a light-colored object in shadow is still shadow. That means initially we need to consider it a dark or a dark midtone or whatever. We need to address it as shadow, as dark. And the inverse is also true. A dark object in light is still light. So this case, we can group it with dark because dark hair is its own unique entity, but we can consciously call out or not the light-facing plane of a dark object, in this case, a dark clump of hair. So we can call that out. Now, we can't make it as bright as this, right? Even though technically box logic says this plane must be as bright as this plane, but because it is a different local color, it breaks that rule. It deviates from that rule in this sense. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit, a little bit of a long-winded explanation. But generally, if the hair is dark, group it with shadow. A dark hair in light is still dark, but you have the option the flexibility to call it out, to start to introduce a light-facing plane in a dark object. And light, light hair, light clothing should also be grouped with, with whatever's in light. Okay, now let's um, draw together here. I'm going to do a little demonstration to show you the process and start to apply some of the ideas that we talked about. So comment below. What type of lighting is this? And what, what base form would you use? Would you use box, cylinder, egg? Box and egg, box and cylinder, all three. Comment below, where is the light and what is a good base form that we can use to start to start the game plan and start, start our value process here? A lot of times it's difficult to uh, photograph beautiful women with, with uh, academic lighting because uh, it's not flattering really. <laughs> but, uh, but this model here, she still looks great. She still looks uh, beautiful and youthful. Probably is very young, probably like 16 or something. But when you, you, know, when you try to photograph an older model like someone you know, my age or older, you. Uh, you generally don't want this kind of lighting.
So I am uh, <laughs> skipping some steps here. I need these shapes because I need to compare them. <laughs> I, need, I need to see them so I know, okay, the eye is a little off, the eye is a little small. This is just for me right now. Don't worry so much about this. Uh, this is very uh, geometric. Uh, gra it's a very abstract graphical drawing that I normally do. But today we also have to consider the 3D aspect of, pl of planes. So I do, I do that a little bit later, which is right uh, now. So we have, did you answer three-quarter light? You are correct. How do you know three-quarter light? Well, where, what are the shadow shapes doing? Do I have the Rembrandt triangle? There it is, right? Remember sometimes the nose shadow doesn't always touch the cheek. So there's the Rembrandt triangle. Where is the light source? Comment below, where's the light source? Of course, it's above and to the right. To the right, are the models left are right. How do I know that? Well, look at how bright this is. That's a highlight. Look at how bright the cheek is. That's a highlight. Look at the top plane of the mouth and the lips. That's a highlight. Look at the nose. The highlight on the nose is a clear indication. It's generally a nice clue to tell you where the light is. So, three-quarter light, single-source light, youthful model with some, she has some, you know, clear plane definition. So, what are we going to use? egg box or cylinder? Well, I would argue box and egg. So, let's draw some boxes and eggs. What's the most important box besides the side plane? The brow, the eye socket. What's the third most important box besides the brow and the side plane of the face? The side plane of the nose. That's a box too. And I'm going to ignore the light details in the eyes for now. I'm just going to do kind of a shapey thing. I'm only doing this, again, the shapey thing because I want to get a <laughs> this uh, likeness. I want to get some, some likeness here. It's, that's the thing about explanation drawing is a lot different than a drawing, drawing, it's, uh, you know what I mean? I got to, uh, when I'm trying to teach something, I have to draw in a certain way. It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky, actually. Obviously, I have to stop and explain. Ooh, ouch. You see that aggressive? You see that, Mark? Ooh, that is tough. That we... Absolutely do not want that. That is tough. So that is, uh, ooh, craftsmanship. This is craftsmanship when you have to be very careful and aware of your materials and your marks. That is tough. See, luckily, if that was a, a pen or a hard charcoal on Bristol, that would be semi-permanent. But l luckily, this is, I have some flexibility here. This is what happens when you're not fully concentrated. Normally, um, yeah, this re recording and teaching is uh, takes away a lot of my concentration bandwidth. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's my that's my excuse for making that crappy mark. But, but anyway, don't don't do that. That's a lesson learned today. Right, before I draw, I come up with a game plan. The game plan was, number one, where is the light? Up and to the right. 
Number two, so three quarter portrait light, Rembrandt, Rembrandt light setup. Number three, am I going to use egg, box, or cylinder, or both or all three? I'm going to use box and cylinder. Rule of box states that different value, different plane. So if we want to communicate the box, we need some planes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to add tone to the light facing, or excuse me, shadow planes, planes that are facing away from the light. That includes the eye, includes the side of the nose, underplane of the cheek, cast shadow shapes, and remember what else? We group with shadow. Comment below. Do you remember? We're just talking about it. Local color, hair, hair, beard, clothing. Okay, her clothing is white, so that stays with the light. What about her hair? Her hair. It's not black, it's not pure white, it's kind of a darky, dirty blonde is like the English slang, dirty blonde, kind of a darkish, light brown hair, dark blonde. So in this lighting scenario, right, if you squint, this value is the same value as shadow, plain. The value of her hair and shadow is pretty damn dark. The value of her hair and light is pretty light, but overall, even the hair and light on the light side of her head, right? This is pretty damn dark. So I'm going to group it with the darks. Dark objects, even in light, should be grouped with darks. So I'm just going to ignore, ignore, ignore all the damn hair details. And this is another thing that I see. Another, you know, if you forget everything in this video and learn one thing is that do not make light shapes in the eye socket as dark as real light shapes, forehead, cheek, light facing place in those. So that's number one. If you do that, your drawings will look a lot better. And do not, for lack of a better word, do not fuck around with damn hair highlights. For God's sake. You know, I see this hundreds of times. I'll see like this absolutely a hair highlight way down here. It looks like they spent two hours on this hair highlight. You know what I mean? And it's just so perfect. And there's like little subtleties and little turns. And oh my God, it's just, it, it's an exquisite hair highlight that really doesn't matter. But everything else looks like crap. You know what I mean? So, so, so don't do that. Don't do that. Dark hair, just, just make it a dark graphic shape for now, and then we'll talk about ways to handle the light in future videos. Maybe not, not this one, but just keep it dark for now. Keep it graphic. Keep it dark, and, uh, and, and you'll, you, you'll be good. You'll thank me. Okay. So essentially, we have a box, but remember the head is a box and an egg and a cylinder. So guess what? Where is the light? The light is here. What did we learn last week? Fall off. Everything that goes away from the light must be darker. Gets darker as it goes away in, port in portraits. That's called the egg effect. So guess what? I'm going to make my egg now. And how do we make tonal marks? With gradation. So this, this is important and kind of fun and kind of liberating. If you're not trained, right, if you're brand new, if you're untrained, if it's, you've never been exposed to realism or, you know, things like, you know, Students League stuff, Riley, Loomis, Bridgman, Bujaro, that kind of thinking, you know, you look at this and you go, oh, you do value matching, right? Oh, I see a half tone here. Oh, I see a tone here. 
Oh, this is number four. Oh, this is number 5.6 on a one to 10. Oh, this is 6.8.7. Oh, this value is a number, is a number. Oh, 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 what value? I can't tell. Is it a 4.56 gray? Oh, oh, or is it a 6.789 gray? I don't know. I can't help me, Chris. What do I do? Don't worry about it. Just ignore it. Make it all an egg. Make it all an egg. Just gray date an egg and you'll thank me. Just gray date an egg. Because realism doesn't come from matching values. I mean, yeah, you can get, you know, we've all seen those drawings where people just hardcore copy a photograph, right? And some of these drawings look, look beautiful, but Realism, really, to me, is about the effect. Realism is the effect. Is it effect or effect? I think it's effect. Oh, I hope it's effect with the E. It's about the effect, meaning the impression. Effect also equals impression. It's the impression of light and shadow in form. When you look at a subject, you and I, because our eyes are so trained to pick out minute details and subtleties and plane changes and colors and forms and anatomy and eyelashes and pupil striations and <laughs> the little tiny vein in the white of the eye, right? Our eye is so trained to see tiny minute things we want to match and draw tiny minute things. Oh, 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 value. Oh, freckle. Oh, oh, eyelash. Oh, 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 highlight in the hair. Da, 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 da. No, you want to design. You want to design a pattern that creates the effect of realism. Realism comes from the effect, and the effect is done with impression. An impression is done with control. So you control the value in your drawing, not what you see. Don't copy what you see. Design a pattern that creates the effect of a realistic face with three-quarter lighting. Does that make sense? Don't copy what you see. Design a pattern that creates the effect looking at a real thing. Design a pattern. That's what we're doing here. We're designing a pattern of values using a box. Now we're using an egg. The design of the egg is that it's curved and it, it gets darker one way, it gets brighter, and eventually to a highlight the other way. The design of the box is one side is in light, one side must be in shadow or half tone plane or non light plane. So, box and egg. We are essentially designing a boxy, eggy, graphical thing that will create the effect of a human being, of a human face and light. So that is really the core of my <laughs> lesson today. You, you can stop watching the video now if you want, or, or you can st stick around and draw with me. We'll try to go through one more example. So I, I hope that makes sense. And that is the one thing that I see over and over and over again in my many years and one of the reasons why I, I started teaching is I felt the need to help people because I see very talented artists and students and people, and they make the same damn mistake every time. It's, it drives me nuts as a teacher. Even me, I have to constantly catch myself, go, oh, wait, wait, hold up. Don't waste two hours on this frigging hair highlight. Oh, wait, wait. Yes, there's a highlight on the cheek, on the chin. But do not make it, it looks really bright, doesn't it? This highlight on the chin looks really damn bright, doesn't it? But for God's sake, do not make it as bright as the highlight on the forehead. Do not make it this bright. It is not that bright. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's my little rant for today. So that's the lesson. Design a pattern. You control the value pattern, not this. It's you. You control the effect of your drawing not the reference. So I hope that makes sense. It's my little rant for today. You control, 
you control the, the, the values on your drawing, not the reference. And so I got my box. I got my egg. What else? What else? What else? I grouped the darks with the lights. Now, obviously, we can go a couple ways now. Typically, what I like to do is establish what is the darkest thing, what is the brightest thing. Again, let's start with the brightest thing. Well, let's start with the darkest thing. The darkest thing can be literally what is the darkest thing on your drawing, uh, on, on the reference or on the model. And typically, it's what's called the occlusion shadows, the very things that are deep and recessed, like the corners of the eyes. Contact shadow, like the underplane of the eyelid, typically very, very, very dark. Corner of the mouth, corner of the nose, the nostrils and things. Right here, under the jaw, typically very dark. All of these need to be dark. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to punch in or emphasize the darkest thing according to me. Because remember, you don't have to follow this. You can design your own value pattern. And in my world, I'm going to dictate that one thing is going to be darker than everything else. Now, according to egg logic, that dark thing should be down here, right? Which it will be. Most things here in this egg zone, the bottom egg zone, right, will be darker than things in the light, right? The dark part of the underplane of her chin and jaw technically is going to be darker than all of these dark underplanes in the eye because it's closer to the light. But it doesn't have to be that way. As long as these two things are dark, I have the liberty to punch something in, emphasize something, make it my own dark. And we all know that it's generally a good idea to make the eyes a focal point, and that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to use dark as an initial focal point read and just punch in something that's dark. And notice how light shapes start to appear. You see that? The moment I punched in the, the, the dark in this shadow zone, in this shadow shape, this nebulous shadowness, light shapes start to appear. So that's, that's the secret. Do not, do not purposely erase out or paint highlights in here. Do not do that. That is, uh, well, I mean, you can. It takes incredible amount of skill and setup. You can get away with it, but in general, it's, Best to be avoided. So I got my darkest thing. Now I have a clear understanding of how dark I can go, how dark everything can be, right? It's up to me if I want to make this that dark or less dark. Now I have more control of how dark to make the off eye. There's things like edges too, which um, we maybe we'll talk about. Because Remember the effect, part of the effect isn't, is, is value, but it's edge, right? Because, you know, let's say you render an eye. If you render an eye, like an eye in shadow like this, right? It still feels like an eye in shadow, right? Versus if you render an eye that's in the socket, that's in a shadow, zone and a shadow plane. If you render it like this, you see the difference? It starts to really jump forward. You see that? That has a much different effect than that. And you see what the difference here? Essentially almost the same value. This is clearly darker, but the edge is different. The treatment is different. So that's another part of the equation. We're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other chapter in the, in the, in the long book of realism that we all, we all love to study.
pretty much good there. Now I'm just going to add a highlight. Now the highlight can be here, can be here, but remember egg effect states that one thing must be brighter and everything else must be not as bright. So I have to choose. I can't make this highlight, this highlight, this highlight the same. That's another common mistake I see too is right. We, we all know, we all see highlight here, highlight here, highlight in the nose, highlight here, highlight here, right? Cheek, mouth, nose, chin, and forehead all have highlights. Do not make them all the same. That's the, the third thing that will help you today. I see this over and over and over again. The highlight on the chin is brighter than the highlight that's close to the light source. I see this over and over and over again, and it's um, a very easy thing to, very easy mistake to make, but very easy to correct. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Be disciplined enough to say, you know what? I don't care what I see. What I'm being fooled by my eyes. My eyes are trained to see contrast where there's not really contrast. I'm going to trust that the effect that I design will create the illusion. So I'm going to create the effect and I'm just going to put it here. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to put another one at the cheek, but not as bright. Then we put one on the nose. And that's it. That's it. This one, I kind of ruined it here, but um, a little smudgy. This one, instead of using a highlight pencil in this case, because I'm drawing on tone paper, I could just slightly pick it out with an eraser. That's all I need. Or slightly darken what's around it. Just like how we handle the core shadow. And there, there we have the impression of a highlight. We didn't literally make a highlight with a white pencil. We created the impression and that's all we want. We want the impression of realism. Realism comes from suggested impressions of things, of values and shapes, not copying the photo. And what else, what else, what else? We got the egg, we got the box, we have halftone planes, right? We all know the cheek is a halftone plane, right? This is box modeling again. The cheek is a, it's not in light, but it's, the light source is here. Whoops, can you guys see that? We have shadow. We have light. And we have something that's neither. That's halfway between shadow and light. It's not fully a shadow plane. It's not a full bright highlight plane. It's something in between. And we all know this is halftone plane. And that is right here. So how do you handle the cheek? Well, you don't make it as bright as the light side of the plane, and you for sure don't make it as dark as the shadow, and you're good. And you see that? It's right now, it's sort of halfway between the light and the dark shadow. Obviously, the moment I make the hair darker around it, it'll start to read. So again, this is my design. And then you're wondering, but Chris, that highlight in the hair is beautiful. I am so tempted to draw it. What do I do? Well, you don't draw it with a white pencil. You don't put a white pencil. You make everything around it darker. But of course, it can't be as dark as the dark accent that you want to uh, the viewer to look at. You see, now I just suggested a highlight. Obviously, the shape too needs to be drawn. It's a, that's an ugly shape. I just quickly drew that, and then there's a there's a little. This highlight is f fairly bright here. This is, in a way, it's a specular highlight. It's a really, uh, this plane is almost perpendicular, that little piece of hair. It has a plane that's perpendicular to the light source, so it's becoming really, really bright. Okay, let's hope that makes sense. Obviously, you know, now we have, I just made a value here, but now, 
In order for this effect to feel real, for this effect to work, oh, and there's a forehead too. Uh, excuse me, a cylinder. How do you? How do I draw foreheads? When I look at foreheads, I think instantly cylinder. It's a cylinder to me. The forehead is basically a cylinder. It has a shadow side. And then a little bit of a half-tone side. That's what I see in these forehead. So now, right, I have a I established a plane with a value. Remember, different value, different plane. So now I have to compare and go, okay, well, this value is this roughly the same as that. It's a little bit brighter. In order for me to maintain the effect, I have to make sure that all these values still maintain the, um, the, the hierarchy of the, of the egg, right? What's down here must be darker than here. The cylinder, what's over here, must be darker than here. There's another way the cylinder works. So I know that this, that, well, this is in shadow, but the, the cheeks in this area must be darker than the cheeks in this area because it's closer to the light. So comparing, right, if this becomes very bright, you'll kill the illusion. If this becomes too dark, it'll start to read a shadow. And that means, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll have to readjust the effect in that case. So now I'm just comparing. Uh, I, I, did it, I did an okay job in my first pass. But really what I'm trying to say is that um, you have to constantly compare the values that you put down and make sure that they obey the, the box logic law, the egg effect principle. And that they are, they support the value pattern that you're trying to establish. In this case, my value pattern states that everything in shadow is pretty damn dark, including dark hair in, in the light.